you just hold it in somehow like welcome back to seek Stein, where we disseminate information and disseminate your brain with the information <laughs> today's question is coming from someone yesterday in the comments wanted to know they said should i squat the weight as fast as possible when I'm squatting, essentially, or should I do the same speed up and down so like someone like Toshiki Yamamoto, not Yamayoto, Yamamoto does? Uh, so it's a very, very good question. Uh, there's a very simple answer, and then there's some pretty nuanced answers, which obviously we're going to go to the nuanced answers because that's what YouTube yeah. is for. It's not for the simple answers. Simple answers are for the quirky one-liners in a 50-second Instagram story, which is not what, what we're yeah, doing Yeah, or a little TikTok video. This is YouTube. This is the gray area. Yeah. This is the margin on the side of your copybook. Yeah. Right. So there's a few things we actually deal with when you're squatting and the speed you're squatting with. Force and reaction forces and, and where the forces occur to us. The next thing then is like kinetic energy and how we influence kinetic energy. So the force you exert while squatting takes place in two areas, right? So if we just take the body as a whole system, obviously each of your muscle units exerts force in different ways to different levers and and there's different ways in which it exerts force but you can basically say your feet exert force into the ground and the barbell exerts force onto your shoulders right and, and what you mainly manipulate is that piece in the middle right um so that's the first thing is that obviously every bit of force you put into the ground if you increase the force you put into the ground you increase the felt force or the reactionary force that comes from the ground into you. Also, the same goes for that barbell on your shoulders. If you squat harder into the barbell, that barbell pushes harder into you. Equal and opposite forces, it's like very, very basic physics. What we look at when we look at the speed of the squat though is we're mainly looking at kinetic energy, right? So kinetic energy is the energy coming from movement or a system in movement. The formula you'll commonly see is like uh, Ke is equal to half mv squared. So it's half times the mass times the velocity squared. And this is where you'll see like loads of people talking about like uh, momentum and like kinetic energy and all these different things when they're talking about uh, like sled pushes or like Westside always talk about half mv squared because because you're squaring the velocity to the velocity is the most important part. That's what they talk about on their speed days. In terms of when to squat fast and and the influence a barbell has over us and our frame when we're squatting fast, we need to look at firstly when we can manipulate that V squared, right? So when we can manipulate the speed, it has a squaring. So if we uh, if we go from two meters per second to three meters per second, it will go from half MV times four to half MV times nine. So obviously there's there's a huge increase here. Why that's important though, and, and particularly in the context of this question is, manipulating the velocity in the, the standing up portion, right? The, the concentric portion of the movement is inherently difficult. So we're pushing against gravity, we're pushing against that mass that's on our back, and we have to have a huge amount of effort for us to increase that velocity. We have to either try harder, be stronger, or we have to have better kind of motor recruitment or better coordination in order to make that bar move up or make ourselves move up faster. But in the case of the downward motion, the eccentric portion of the lift, the loading phase of the lift, we can increase velocity by simply trying less. We can loosen our legs, we can drop down, you can drop down pretty much as fast as you want to drop. And this is where a lot of the issues come with squatting and squatting speed and how quickly or how slowly we should sit down into the squat is because most of the time on the way back up, you're pushing as hard as you can anyway. Barring some rare cases where you might give tempo squats to people, most of the time they stand up as quickly as they can. It's in the descent part of the squat where we start to see a lot of the kind of questions or we start to see a lot of people unsure of what they should be doing. So if we kind of continue on the lines of the kind of physics of it and the biology of it, if you imagine your tendons essentially act as springs. So the spring mechanism theory in biomechanics is something that gets a lot of um, kind of viewing, I suppose, uh, think fits his little finger tendons there. Or we look at the, the most commonly one used would be something like the kangaroo's legs, which is a great example for people who like to visualize the 
tendons acting as springs. <clears throat> so your tendons do a lot of different things in when they are doing movement in vertebrae, as they kind of talk about. So your tendons play a role in um, energy attenuation, uh, muscle power output or amplification of power output from muscles. They play a role in the metabolism of energy and the storage of this energy. They also do things like aid stability when you're squatting. And so that kind of brings us to a realm of, if you imagine your tendon is somewhat like a spring, but then in terms of different regards, it's totally different to a spring. So we imagine a mechanical spring, the harder we push it down, the faster it goes up. That's essentially what Fitz was saying there. So the harder we push a spring, the faster it goes up. However, from the aforementioned things we just mentioned there, the spring is not a dumb spring. The spring is a very, very intuitive, very, very organic, responsive to the outside stimulus coming into it. So your tendons are very, very responsive to a load of different uh, signals and variables coming at it. So it's not just a dumb spring. And so as with all things, your tendons remold as your squatting career progresses. So this is kind of where we break down into squatting speeds into a change in experience and level of experience, your desire from training, what you're doing in training and then where you're kind of going and then the, essentially the absolute weights you're using. So if you start with beginners, beginners will, because their tendons are new, their muscles are new, their coordination is poor, we always squat very, very slowly and we keep it as consistent as possible. So essentially, regardless of what beginners are doing in their training, whether it's sets of 10 or a heavy single or a few different lighter singles, we always want beginners to be squatting the most controlled and appropriate manner possible, knowing that at some stage they will eventually start speeding up their squats. So for our beginners, we're always looking for a very, very smooth and consistent tempo. Uh, we're always looking for perfect positions as best as we can possibly do. We're looking for issues. We're looking, is the mobility appropriate? We're really looking for, is the coordination of the movement appropriate? And once we've got this down after a period of maybe one year, two years, maybe even a little bit more, once we've got that down, we'll move into a different area then and as their experience progresses. So once you've got that area where their coordination is quite good, their movement is quite good, they're very, very confident in the weights, maybe they're moving somewhere north of like 160 kilos, 170, maybe beyond 180 kilos where you start seeing kind of a certain level of uh, experience and maybe leaving kind of behind the beginner level and moving to something like a journeyman level of squats. At this stage then, we'll probably start looking at something like a the scent will be slower than the ascent of the squat. So as long as the speed going in or the energy going into our tendons is slower than it's being released, we'll always end up with more power from that tendon. We'll use those tendons more appropriately. So as we get a little bit better in that kind of journeyman position of the squats, <clears throat> we'll see we're looking for a little bit of a faster descent. So not a crazy dive bomb descent like we would example from seen from maybe someone like Clarence earlier in his career, where he very, very aggressively hit the bottom of the squat as fast as possible. And then in Clarence's case, very aggressively stood up with these weights. So <clears throat> we ought to be looking at slightly increasing the speed of descent to increase the power we can output on that ascent. So we can increase that velocity on the stand up for our kind of journeyman mid tier squatters. I think then when you start drifting beyond the mid-tier, right, when you start looking at people who are putting all the systems in place to squat the most amount of weight, then we start looking again at that Hooke's Law, what Gurf was talking about earlier. If we take a spring, the tension in that spring is proportional to the force that's being put on it. So obviously if I want to squat the most weight, I want to put the most force into that spring unit so it will then react and then allow me to stand up faster. In the case of those elite or that kind of next level of squatter, where we're utilizing more speed, where we're storing more energy in the muscle tendon units, what we then need to look at is the support system around the squat. As Gurf said, for most beginners, it's just simply not possible for them to sit down into a squat quickly and stand back up quickly because they'll end up looking like a crushed can. So they'll have force pushing on the top, They'll have reactive force pushing on the bottom and they're the bit left in the middle and that's when we see the knees caving in and touching each other it's where we see the backs rounding over and we see the horrible fails right in terms of support structures that are important and if you're somebody who you think you're at that kind of mid level where you're really controlling everything and you want to go to the next level where you can put more speed in store more energy in those muscle tendon units and then get a bigger squat because of it the main thing you'll start by looking at 
is you'll start to look at the midline. The midline for most people will be the weakest part of their squat. I would say after the midline, we'll look at quad strength. And then after quad strength, we'd look at hip and posterior chain strength. That just tends to be what you find in the vast majority of athletes. I think if you're an adult onset athlete, it's particularly poignant that you spend a huge amount of time around the midline. And it's probably something you're going to have to aggressively chase with your training for the entirety of your career. If you're somebody who comes into lifting weights from a, a sports background or an athletic background, it's very likely that the support systems will be there in some in one way or another that will allow you to progress a small bit faster. So you'll you'll have better proprioception, you'll be able to keep a stronger midline. You might have better quad development, so your knees won't cave in, you might have better hip development and posterior chain development so your back won't round. But that really is the next thing. When you do want to take the step forward of being able to put more speed into the descent, so you then get more of that kinetic energy and then more of that kinetic energy gets converted into potential energy within the tendons and then converted back into kinetic energy in the way back up of your squat, that really is what you need to look at. Is my system strong enough to withstand all of this extra energy all of this extra force all of the extra reactive forces that are happening because of me increasing my kinetic energy and if it's not what are the steps i'm going to have to take to get there so then if we look further on to the most advanced lifters so we'll get into that last kind of ex expert level of squatters what we'll see is there's still nuance in terms of the speed and how fast someone will squat down and up depending on where they are in their training for example or more likely <clears throat> the number of sets and reps that they're doing in that particular session so a great example of this is the person that the commenter mentioned was Toshiki in his squats right so if you watch his video where he does 321 kilos you'll notice him in the warm-up for that so we've got everything from like the barbell right up to that 321 kilos he is squatting those singles as fast as he possibly can on the ascent because when we are squatting for a single we want to be making sure that we're going for that maximum velocity and we're encouraging that to happen we don't want to be reinforcing that kind of consistent a little bit slower speed when we're going for a heavy single we want to going as fast as we possibly can but if you go to some of the sets and reps on Tashiki's YouTube channel, or you see him doing things like sets of you know tens or eights, or there's videos him doing multiple sets of five by five at something like 270 kilos, you'll notice that speed, like Kamsha mentioned, is a lot smoother. He's squatting down and up at a very similar pace. And this is the reason is because he wants to do his, these as consistently as possible. He doesn't want to put the max amount of energy into the first rep of the first set for five, and then have little energy later in the session. Tajiki knows as he gets more fatigued, he'll need to put more effort in later and he wants to conserve as much of his energy as he could possibly can and be as consistent as he possibly can so he can reinforce those good squat patterns. So I hope that kind of cleared up some of the ideas behind how fast you should be squatting where you are. If you want to learn more about squatting, we have a two hour lecture at the University of Sikistan on Teachable. If you're looking for a squat program, we have the Road Your Squat program at seekerstrength.com. It is two sessions a week, eight weeks in length. One session has your assistance work in it, and then the second session has just your squats. So two sessions of squats, one with assistance work. Literally thousands of people have ran this, and people have made great progress on it. So you can slot this into basically any of your training. If you're a weightlifter, powerlifter, crossfitter, real athlete, uh, MMA, jiu-jitsu, whatever it is, you'll be able to fit into your training because it's just your squats, and it'll work incredibly well for eight weeks. Can you like mouth breathe or something when you're sitting? Like, can no. you just go like. I just can't do it. It's so loud.